Good morning and welcome back to the diary. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. Somewhere I'm um, completely new this morning. Never been here before. Um, first impressions, <laughs> it's, it's small. Although I have to say it is immaculately groomed. But um, before we get into the, the whys and wherefores of what we're doing um, today, I must record my um, sincere thanks to those of you that sent me messages of support and best wishes for my uh, appointment with the NHS. I do appreciate it. Thank you very much indeed. Now, as for this place, um, well, I know nothing about it at all. So I thought I'd start by um, getting the float rod out with a plummet and have a look at um, one or two swims before I decide where, where I'm going to fish. Um, so uh, I'll be back once I get settled, once I get settled into a swim. Right, okay, that's us um, settled in. It's, um, it's a little bit of a tight swim, to be honest. Um, but I am going to be fishing down the margin, so um, I just chose this one. It's, it's just marginally deeper than some of the other swims I looked at. I haven't said that, it's only, <laughs> I don't know, two and a half feet deep. Um, so, why here? Well, a number of reasons really. Um, I, I, as you can imagine, after my long convalescence, I'm desperate to get out fishing, so this is fairly local. Um, but two main reasons. One, I had a lot of time on my hands over the last few weeks, and so, um, and as you can imagine, I spent a lot of time on YouTube, and I came across um, one of my local fellow YouTubing anglers, who's been fishing a bit of a campaign on here to, um, to try and catch a double-figure carp. He, uh, he seems fairly convinced there are double-figure carp in here. There are a lot of carp in here. Um, and his favourite, one of his favourite tactics is to fish on the surface using um, floating bread. Um, and he's quite successful, I have to say. Although, in one of the videos I watched, he was getting really frustrated by a lot of small fish knocking the bread off his hook before the carp could get a look in. Um, quite amusing, really. Um, <laughs> but eventually, accidentally, he hooked one of these small fish and it was a cruising carp. Now, those of you that um, follow the channel will know that um, my first love as far as the fishing is concerned is my winter pike fishing. I fish for just about anything else during the summer but my two favourite summer fish are the tench and um, crucian carp and so because I'm a bit restricted up here in the northeast as to waters that have got decent crucian carp in um, I thought I would come and have a look and see if I could find just what size of Cruzian carp are actually in here. So that was, that was one reason. Um, the other reason, and it's a practical one, this one, um, it's only a short walk from the car park to the water. <laughs> and in my current state of mobility, <laughs> that was kind of the difference between fishing and not fishing. So uh, it, it's, uh, it filled that, what, that um, requirement admirably. Um, what do I think of it? Well, so far, I've been fishing about 10 minutes. I've had two or three tiny fish, including tiny mirror carp, which I think you may have just seen. Um, it's small, <laughs> like I said earlier. In fact, um, I, I saw it described as a farm pond. Um, and frankly, it would nearly qualify as a garden pond. Um, as I say, it doesn't seem more than about three feet deep. 
um, at least tiny. It's well, it's just well looked after, I have to say. Um, but it is small, so um, that might not be a bad thing. We'll see. Um, but uh, we'll give it a go. Let's just see what we can get. I'm fishing a very, very light waggler setup. Um, see if I can show you. It's a 0.6 gram antenna float, which I started off with shotting down the line. But the problem is, there must be thousands of tiny roach there. And of course they nip at the shot. So bite detection was <laughs> virtually impossible. Um, so I've switched over now to fairly standard lift rig with one single large shot about four inches up from the hook. Um, the shot itself is too big for the float. Um, and so I can tell I'm fishing correctly when the float is just on the surface and that means the shots are resting on the bottom. That solves some of the problems of the false false bites I'm getting off the little fish. Um, you've seen me put a couple of small handfuls of hemp into the swim. I'm a bit nervous about putting too much bait into the swim because as I said before there are some bigger carp in here and I'm fishing with a two and a half pound hook link and so I'd like to try and avoid those if I can, if I can. Um, although I suspect there's a degree of inevitability about getting smashed up at some point and I've started with um, my old favorite half a grain of sweet corn um, just to see what uh, what comes to that before I, I've got a choice really I've got sweet corn dead maggots and some tiny um, pellets hard pellets so I've got a choice so it's just a case of gradually putting a little bit more hemp in it I suspect and seeing what uh, what we can attract oh and I should say that you can't imagine how good this feels after uh, four weeks of um, four weeks of confinement great to be back <laughs> That's a bit better, Roach. Well, I've been fishing for, I don't know, two and a half hours. I've had, um, and lots of baby carp, including one tiny, <laughs> it's a very tiny cruisian, an aquarium fish that one, um, and quite a lot of roach, um, modest sized roach and rud. Um, still fishing corn hook bait and still only feeding sparingly with the um, with the hemp. As I say, I'm, I'm extremely nervous about latching into one of the bigger carp on this this very fine gear which um, I mean those of you that follow the diary will know I'm more of a 65 pound braid and two size four trebles man <laughs> so this um, this finesse business is um, outside of my comfort zone slightly I'm on my fourth hook link that's got nothing to do with fish that's because it's a bit, a bit cramped this swim and um, I keep um, snagging up the, the reeds and the uh, vegetation in front of me so but yeah good fun nice to be out as I said earlier in fact very nice to be out um, as I said earlier and uh, we'll just keep plugging away as time goes on and the hemp that I'm putting in begins to build up you never know might get what we're looking for What have we 
you got here then? <laughs> well, I'm not sure what this is. Oh, it's, it's not what we came for. It's got me weeded. Come out, thank you. Yes, <laughs> it's a leap into the net. They're getting better on the on the roach front. Nice fish. In very good call. Uh, very good condition. Wow, that's a beautiful little fish. Lovely, lovely little rod. Now that one is a better one. Better stamp the roach. What do you think? Not quite what we're after, but I hope. <laughs> well, plenty of um, roach. The, uh, the odd rod now and again um, but not uh, not the cruising so far um, I'm still fishing with the corn getting loads of bites missing loads <laughs> missing loads of bites but um, no perhaps the head of cruisin when I when I first heard about this place and spotted it on YouTube um, oh I uh, immediately did some research to see what I could find out. Um, the pond was restocked back in two, by the Environment Agency back in um, 2010, and there were 3,000 cruisers went in. I don't know what size they were. I would imagine small, but. Um, yeah, 3,000 of them, and obviously in 13 years a lot can happen. A lot of good things and a lot of bad things, obviously. But um, I thought, uh, you know, for 13 years for them to move, grow on and establish themselves, it might be a good cruising water. Beginning to have me doubts. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to weed me up, I know it is. I'm not sure what it is yet. Oh, it's a much better roach. <laughs> Yeah, well, he shouldn't really complain about catching nice roach. <laughs> when you set your heart on something else, there's not a lot wrong with that, is there really? Well, <laughs> there's something with a bit of weight about it. I'm not sure what this is. 
but it's pulling back. <laughs> Not in the waves. in these little lilies here. I suspect it was a carp of some sort, but we'll never know. Well, one last cast. <laughs> Actually, this is about the third or fourth or fifth last cast, but uh, I'm going to have to go. Um, I mean, I've enjoyed today. Frankly, just being out was going to be enough no matter what, but I've had a load of roach. <clears throat> Um, the odd rod and lots of small baby carp that you've, uh, some of which you've seen. Um, so I've enjoyed it, and as I say, just great to be back out. Um, what's next? Well, I don't know. I'm still having to take things a bit carefully, and um, so it's going to have to be somewhere where I don't have to walk very far. Um, so I might come back here with the feeder gear and try the feeder rod. Um, or failing that, I have a club pond which is a short walk and has got some decent carp in. So again, it might be a feeder session for the carp. But anyway, um, that's for another day. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this one. We didn't we didn't get the uh, cruisers; they didn't uh, didn't turn up. Um, but as I say, a good day otherwise. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I suspect it's going to be it's it will be quite a short video. <laughs> Um, but uh, I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Hang on a minute. <laughs> oh dear. Well, well. You, there's, oh, that's another nice roach. <laughs> In fact, that's almost the best of the day, I would say. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, that is a nice fish. Yeah, I would say almost the best of the day. There you go. Can you see that? I hope you can see that. That's the stamp of roach. That's as big as any I've had today. Good fun. See you again soon.